Hey, good morning, Eastern Oregon on this AM on EO Alive, your connection to Eastern Oregon on this June the 3rd. It's a Thursday. Yes, Man. it is. <laughs> How you it's doing? pretty much Friday for me because I'm golfing tomorrow. That's right. Where are you yep. golfing at? It's at Buffalo Peak. It's a fundraiser for... I think they do a um, scholarship in the in his name. I believe his name was Ryan Sullivan. Don't quote me on that, but he was. He, I know he was a local firefighter. I think he he. Um, I think he worked for the federal government. Okay. And so, are you um, are you going to do a show out there, or do a check in, or doing a what's your? I we haven't even talked about it. No, I, no. You gonna probably not. Yeah. I don't cool. know. Maybe, maybe we'll see. I don't know. I, I, I got invited to play in it by uh, Joel McCraw, who's the basketball coach out at Union, and yeah. I play golf with him in the uh, in the summertime quite a bit. And we're just, I, I might do a check in. I thought it was at Legrand, but it's actually at Buffalo Peak. So, so when you, I don't, when you do a tournament like that, is it a pair? You do pairs, four. or what do you four. do? Yeah, four foursome scramble so okay. everybody hits off the tee then you pick the best ball from there everybody hits from there then you pick that best ball so then whoever does the best of the four of you that's the position that everyone hits from from on the second yeah there's there's usually rules though where you have to use like four of each person's drive or three so okay so you can't just use the same person's drive every time so yeah so if you have a ringer it doesn't throw the whole game. Well, it does because every other hit can be theirs. Yeah. No, that's so, why I like playing with McCraw because he's good. Is he? <laughs> so is Toby Chamberlain. He's on our team too. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And so then, and so then, how do they raise money with this? So then they charge for the team, and yeah, and it costs that... uh, it costs two hundred and eighty dollars a team. Wow. And then the golf course gets a little cut, and then the rest, just like the Doug tries, the golf course gets a little cut. All the rest of the money goes towards whatever. I think it's a scholarship in his name. I think I did. I did one scramble once, and it wasn't. It was. It was the one and only time I played out at uh, Buffalo Peaks, and I was so. I don't know. I was so poor. Poor. Such a poor player. I was embarrassed most of the time. It was like. Yeah. Once you get to the point where you can hit the ball decent, golf gets really fun. Yeah. Like all you got once you get past that the shanks, you know. Yeah. Then you uh then golf gets fun. Yeah. Well, how For do you sure. get past that point? Uh it's called practice, practice. playing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Repetition, muscle memory. Russia, yeah, and money. Yeah, you got to have yeah. It's not yeah. it's, it's not cheap to play golf, that's for sure. Yeah. Buffalo Peak has really good prices, though. You know, it's Very funny because I, prices for I as, was for as nice of a course as, uh, I, as it is. I was in a meeting with um, uh, Donna Beveridge the other day, one of our county commissioners, and she was she was bragging about Dana and how good of a job he's doing, and the uh, the number of interaction or players or events and and membership. I I can't remember. I mean it, but it boiled down to. It boiled down to dollars and cents that the county was seeing come in, you know, because of that. Yeah, I think if I remember right, Dana told me, like, and don't quote me on this because I don't remember, but I want to say like the first half of year that he was there, they <clears> ended up in in the black or even, which was like the first time in a long time for that golf course. Yeah, like I think the first time ever, maybe. Well, and don't it, quote me on that, but I'm sh pretty sure that's like right. Well, I think that in the black means they're still the county is still spending money, but I don't. I thought it, no. I think in the black means that you're making a no, profit. No, I realize that, but but I think that what happened and Donna was explaining this was is that they're they're just trying to lose less because it's kind of like the library or the swimming pool for the city of Lagrand. Yeah, there's it's a no, public service. We pay taxes right. for it. Exactly right. There's no way. There's no way the library is going to pay for itself, or the pool is going to pay for itself. And so then the county has kind of changed their position, and that's kind of how they're looking at it. Is is like, hey, this is a draw for people to Union County, 
this is a an, an amenity, a service that is worth investing in. So, but if it's a, if it if it's a service, if it's a county service that we pay taxes for, why don't I, I? I wonder why people that are residents of the county pay the same amount as somebody that's not. That's a pretty good question. And I that, never thought of that about that. Yeah, yeah, and that's a valid. But I, but I mean. Yeah, so I don't I don't know for sure. I know they're doing much better. I know that they're mo- they're losing a lot less than they ever have, you know. Yeah. Yep. So, no doubt about that. And so it's a win, you know. It doesn't but yeah. Well, hey, let's look at man, it's it's it looks like it's going to be hot again out there today. I got my air conditioners in, so Did you? <laughs> so you're feeling better? I woke up this morning cold. Did Benny come over and help you? Yep. Yep, we right. got them both in last yesterday. That's good. So yeah, so here's here's Gabe's oh thing again up back to ninety. 90 but look, at, it's gonna it's gonna we're gonna have thunderstorms probably. Yeah, yeah. Paul, you know how that is when you have a warm day and then you have a storm. It's it about the be, worst thing right now. Yeah, is thunder. Yeah, and then tomorrow, man, tomorrow looks like it's gonna be down a little bit. Be a beautiful day. I didn't I should we should have asked him how the weekend was gonna look. He'll come out with a forecast tomorrow for the weekend. I got the hiccups. Do you? Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I hate that. Well, so I'm trying to get rid of them. Uh those of you that have joined us, we appreciate you being here. Um what do uh, they do on like live TV shows when somebody gets the hiccups? I don't know. I've never seen that exactly happen. Yeah, I think because they find like something to cut to or something. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Oh, let's by go, the way, this is brought to you by. Let's go to the news reporter in the field, or yeah, or this happens. Hey, how you yeah, doing? Yeah, we don't have yeah. we don't have a news reporter <laughs> in the field. So, although uh, I did stop this morning, I was gonna film it, but I decided it was against my better judgment. But I think that there was um, there was something going on right across the street from uh, Anderson and Perry on my way in on fur. And they had like a guy in a parking lot. And I think he was like just parked there sleeping in his vehicle. But mm-hmm. I don't know exactly. But city co- cops were there. And I stopped and I was like, man, man, should I take some pictures and film this? And I decided, nah, I need to get to. I got to <laughs> do this morning. Um, so, yeah, Pat. Uh... <laughs> Pat Patrick Flynn from Grand Round Hospital Foundation is going to be joining us here in a bit. Uh, he's just running a few minutes late. And so we'll just kind of, until he gets here, we'll talk a little bit. Uh, they have a big event that's coming up the end of the month. And they're wanting to talk about that. But so city council last night was pretty interesting. Yeah, um, we'll see about that. So I guess there were, you know, most of it was pretty straightforward. It was... Uh, um, and I, and I won't go into it all, but the, but there were two things that were kind of at the end of the meeting, they talked about getting back in person, the city council itself wanting to get back in the chambers and what that was going to require. They kind of laid out a couple of different ser- uh, scenarios. Robert did the city manager, but, uh, the, the option that they, and you can watch all of this on it's on Facebook or on our on our network uh, on YouTube, wherever. But toward the end of the meeting, they talked about this. The bottom line is they decided that they're going to in in the July meeting. And I can't I, I I have that on my calendar, but I don't know when it is. It's normally the first the first Monday. Um, but I would imagine it's the first Monday after the fourth. Excuse me, the first Wednesday after the fourth of July. But. Uh, anyhow, they decided that, that, I mean, it's essentially, they're going to check vaccinations as people come in the door. And so if you don't have a vaccination, then you're going to have to, uh, wear a mask. And so it's, it's good luck with that around here. I know. I, I thought I, I was surprised that was the direction they went. Um, uh, uh, one of the counselors felt pretty strongly about because the options were number one, either everyone wear masks and that social distance, best, probably. yeah, every or that they check vaccinations and those people that are not vaccinated 
uh, will have to wear mask and social distance. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I th- I, yeah, I, I mean, I don't see a big issue if they make it a choice. Like if they say, if you don't want to mer- wear a mask and you want to show that you, you're vaccinated, then be my guest. But if they say, you you know, like we're going to, Check them. Check for vaccinations at the door. That sounds a little more intrusive, you know. Well, I think you know. I mean, yeah. I mean, I think if you if you come in with a mask on, they're not even going to ask you if you're vaccinated. Yeah. Well, and they shouldn't. Right. And then, and one of the council members asked, "Well, how are you going to reinforce this, or how are you going to enforce it?" And and I mean, you know, since it's the city, they have the city police at their disposal, and so. They're literally going to have an officer at the door checking vaccinations. That's a little people, bit much. If people aren't wearing me. a mask, yeah, and if they're not, you know, in the you're going to have a cop to... checking. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's a weird. I mean, it's a. I I think it's a no win situation personally. I say you just t- say if you want to wear a mask, you wear a mask. I mean, if, if you don't you know, show you're vaccinated, then wear a mask. It's that simple. There don't need to be a cop. Well, but the question is, is so what happens if someone doesn't want to show their vaccination and they don't, and they don't, they can't come in and they don't. Well, and that's, that's what they're saying is, is that, yeah, but who's going to enforce that? And there's going to be a cop that says, no, if you're not, if you're not going to prove that you have a vaccination and you're not going to wear a mask, then you're not going to be able to come in. So. Is the cop necessary? Well, I don't know. It's a good question. I guess we'll find out. I mean, I I don't think uh, I I me per I mean, you could call the cops if it got out of hand, but I think introducing the cops in that situation just makes it even more volatile. Yeah. Well, I think so too, and I think that there. I mean, there's going to be there'll be somebody that like wants to challenge that. So. Of course, there always is. I mean, there somebody looking for some attention or yeah. So, what do you guys think? If you're out there listening, you have a comment on whether they should or should not, yeah, do that. So that's that's one. And then the other, then uh, well, hey, Patrick's here. So yeah, he, hang on. I, I I have something more to say yeah. about that. So you okay. can wait a minute. Okay. Um, my son got. Uh, tested last night and we're going to find out today but he in on the west side they're wrestling and and they're wrestling without masks and um he lost sense of uh taste on saturday and got a really bad headache on monday so he went he had a covid test last night and we'll find out today most likely he probably has it i would imagine he probably does but i guess that's one of the other you know, conversations is, is that, I mean, the, the, the number of young people, I mean, that's a big thing, younger people getting vaccinated and so on and so forth right now. But those that really get, I mean, like the fatality rate among younger people, people under 18, under 17 is like minuscule. I mean, yeah. and so, I mean, I, I know why they're doing it. They're, they're, you know, they're trying to arrest the spread of it, even in schools or whatever it is. But I don't know if I had if I had a, a, a young kid, I'm I'm not sure I'd be a big fan in getting them vaccinated. So it's crazy, though. They're wrestling without masks over there. And then over here we have a basketball game and the kids have masks around their chin. Really? Yeah. The basketball game with Grandin Baker, the, the players had to wear their masks over their chin. And so I went to Todd Gorm, my buddy, who's a ref, and for the referees for OSAA, they have the choice as long as they're vaccinated, whether or not they wear the mask. So two of the referees had no mask on because they were vaccinated. One of them was also vaccinated, but he had a mask on because he's an administrator at a school. And then the players had the masks over their chin. So I asked Gorm, I was like, you, can you catch a... Uh, COVID through like your chin hair or something now? Or what? Like, why do these kids have masks on their chins? And they well, didn't pull them up when they came to the bench or anything. They just wore them over their chins the whole game. Huh. Well. Both teams. That's, 
let's let's bring Pat into this conversation. Oh no, yeah. no, 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 you don't want to wade in. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> No, it's funny because, uh, yeah, I, I mean, it sounds like they're trying to comply wearing masks, but not fully. I don't know. I can't imagine running or doing athletics. Well, I can't imagine that anyway, but I can't imagine uh, <laughs> doing, doing that with a mask on. So, Flynn, how many times have you been on EO Alive shows? Uh, probably more than your viewers care to. Well, then Worry get yourself it. situated and get your head squared up. <laughs> oh, sorry. I know. <laughs> yeah. How are you this morning, man? I'm good. A little scrambled and frantic, but all right. How about you guys? <laughs> yeah. I'll coach you into it. Don't worry. Yeah. So no, you're a you're a you're a wrestling ref though, right? Yeah. Well, so I, are, not this year, but yeah. Yeah, but normally. What are the what are they doing wrestling wise over here? Do you know? Honestly, I'm I'm completely out of it this year. So totally out of the loop. Know. Yeah, yeah. All righty. Well, hey, let's shift. Sorry, here. So I'm not we, any help. <laughs> yeah, you're none and whatsoever. I don't yeah. know what they're doing <laughs> wrestling over here either. I know on the west side they're not wearing masks. Huh. Well, yeah, I don't know how yeah. it would be practical if you did wear them. Yeah, I don't know. Well, which is weird because the West Side has been so far behind everybody else. The school, oh, he caught it. See, he's been on enough to know that he needs to get that light out of there. <laughs> <laughs> yep, he's getting it. He's get, I was going to say it. something. I'll figure but, this out. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't understand. Like, the West Side, they didn't even go back to school until, what was it, April? Yeah, my kids didn't even go in school in person until the middle of April. But but now all of a sudden they're wrestling without masks. I don't understand. Like I'll never understand it. I think the West Side I mean, I think the West Side is pretty heavily influenced by California, frankly. And so so then they've kind of followed so cuz cuz well, I mean, I, I don't know. The whole West Side of the United States, the coast was like really clamped down. And then all of a sudden they like decided in unity that, okay, we're going to open up. And then it's like, you know, so it's kind of been a light switch flip. So I don't know. It's, it's been a mess. Well, Hey, let's switch gears. So, uh, so Pat, you're here to talk to us about this event that's coming up. Tell us what's going on with the foundation and what this thing is. Yeah. So kind of on the brighter side of things, um, you know, <laughs> the, regulations have lifted enough and and um you know the weather has been good and and cases are down and everything so the foundation uh typically has a gala event in the uh you know late winter early spring kind of the march april time frame of course we we weren't able to do that last year uh we haven't been able to do that this year but we've been looking at uh, other options and uh so we came up with the idea and we rented the drive-in and we're going to have basically a summer party there. Uh, it's going to be a fundraiser for the foundation. Uh, we've got some really cool projects that we're doing this year. Um, you know, we're buying new torches. Um, for those who aren't familiar, go on our YouTube page and uh, look at look at the torch. It's basically a, a human-sized bug zapper, but it kills uh, bacteria, viruses, mold spores, things like that to help reduce secondary infections, including COVID. Uh, so we roll these things into our isolation rooms where we've had uh, COVID patients uh, when we do have them up here. And that helps, uh, uh, you know, clean the room even more than our uh, EVS staff can do. Um, we're also buying uh, new patient uh, patient care boards for, for our uh, ICU, uh, as well as a new messaging system to enhance messaging for all of our patients. Um, but the uh, we're, we're running out of the drive-in. Chef Murray Baker's going to come in and do a Brazilian barbecue dinner. Uh, we're going to have a band, sort of some music and some dancing and things like that. Uh, and then we're going to have a surprise movie at the end of the night that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, put it up on the big screen and, and give a chance to, for folks to have some fun and uh, just, you know, be able to gather and, and kind of do things. And it's all going to be outside, so it's all, uh, you know, all within CDC guidelines and everything else like that. So it should, should really be a great time. So, so people are going to show up. Let's kind of break this down. So, and what's, and what's the date again? Uh, sorry. Yeah. Friday, June 25th uh, so, at 630 is when the gates will open. So it's a Friday night 
just uh, mm -hmm. two or three weeks out. So, and yep. and uh, people will will come and they'll they'll drive in. They're going to park their cars toward the back part of the drive-in area, uh, yep. and then during the front part of the drive-in area, if people are familiar with that. Your guys are going to have tables. And people will come and be seated there. In front of that, there will be a band that will be playing, right? Yeah. Uh, yep. And there and is there going to be a dance floor or a area where there's a dancing literal or? dance floor? Yeah, it won't be a literal dance floor, but there, you know, not, there's some nice flat space there uh, for people to to you know shuffle around whatever they want to do. I, you know, I'm not a dancing person at all, so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what it takes to do that, but um, you know, yeah, I think there's there's going to be plenty of room for people to move around and, and and chat, and you know, some folks maybe who they haven't seen in a while, you know, go get a beverage and and just hang out and enjoy the music and stuff like that. Uh, there's also going to be a, a, a live online auction that uh, not only attendees can can participate in, but anybody can participate in. That URL that uh, Kyle posted down there on the bottom. Uh, just go there. You can sign up. You can buy tickets. You can register to, um, uh, you, you know, um, a bid on auction items. Um, so yeah, it's it, it's going to be a lot of fun. And, and and you know, because it's outdoors, there's going to be plenty of space where you know, if, <laughs> stay away. You know, <laughs> you can you can back yourself up and be wherever you want to be or or sit comfortably. You know, even if you only want to have a couple people at a table, we can do that too. Yeah. So do you want to pull in that website, Kyle, and? Yeah, so this is this is kind of a mock up. That's not really our drive in, but it's a mock up right. of yeah. Uh no, that's that's cool. And Kyle was saying you have some really cool auction items. Yeah, yeah and I that. actually don't have I don't even have all the items up there yet, uh, just because we have so many. Where'd you get all um, the autograph stuff at? Oh, I've got sources. <laughs> Well, you ain't got those kind of sources. So go through that, Kyle. What are they? Oh, well, look. I mean, you got j the catch right here. They even have it on the helmet. That's cool. I know, but it's hard. It's hard to read. Oh, so just, yeah, read it Montana out. Montana and Clark uh, signed helmet. Tom Brady quote. I don't know what that is. Pedro Pascal signed helmet. Rob Gr Gronkowski, couple Gronk helmets. A DK Metcalf. Joe Montana football. Play catch with Edgar Martinez. Russell Wilson helmet. There's all <laughs> kinds of stuff. Vacations, wine. Yeah. Palm I think Island you need like sports stuff. Day. Oh, yeah. That's all I looked at. <laughs> I, I didn't even look <laughs> at any of the other stuff. I got caught up on the. I was like, where did they get this stuff? Like, <laughs> uh, yeah. They're available out there. If you know where to look and who to talk to, you, you can get that stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah. I um, know you can buy it, uh, but right. I mean, and then we've got a ton of stuff to, from local businesses and local vendors that I just haven't had time to get up there yet, but I will probably uh, early next week. Uh, we've got stuff um, like local trips, local features. We've got uh, tickets to the Boise Water Park. Um, gosh, trying to remember what else we got. We got a signed ball from the Seattle Mariners. Um, we've got Lego sets from the Hobby Habit. Um, all kinds of stuff. So yeah, a lot, a lot of cool stuff. Um, we're going to have a wine pool there as well. So uh, what's kind of fun about that, you go up there, you, you pay uh, for the opportunity and you're guaranteed to get at least a $20 value uh, bottle of wine. Uh, but there are some bottles of wine that are up in the $100 plus range. Uh, shout out to uh, Find Your Wide Travel and Bella for helping us out with that. Um, and, Is that uh, kind of like wine another... gambling, Flinny? No, not gambling whatsoever at all. Um, it's it, it's it's a it's a opportunity for a bottle of wine, <laughs> and uh, but also a big shout out to U.S. Bank, who's the title sponsor. Uh, they help make a lot of this happen. Um, they are really uh, excited to be part of it. They're helping put together some really awesome swag bags for all of our attendees. Um, so they're great partners to have on this particular event. That's nice. It's cool. Well, that's cool. And to back yeah. up just a little bit, uh, you, the event, the foundation, excuse me, the gala that was, was that two years ago? And it seems like forever, but it was about <laughs> a year ago. Um, yeah, the last gala had, we had was in 2019. Yeah. And so you were like just 
a couple of days before the gala when you had to cancel yeah. because of COVID. Uh, yeah, the and, yeah we were scheduled for March 13th of last year, and okay. state order came down on March 11th. So we were literally two days away from our gala, and we had to pull the plug, unfortunately. Wow. Man. And I remember, I remember hearing you like, I mean, all, the baker had baked all of the goods. I mean, there was just a ton yeah. of stuff that was already yeah. the the entertainment was booked uh and the whole it was that yards. comedian yeah it was that comedian yeah i remember yeah yeah and and what's awesome about it is, is that he he's going to come out for us next year uh, presuming we'll be able to have everything as normal next year um so he 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 just uh you know we worked it out to where he he held on to the fee and he's going to come out for us next year so um you know it, the pl on the plus side, you know, we'll be able to carry everything over. Uh, but on the downside, it's it will have been two years, you know, uh, by the time it's all said and done when we have a, a regular gala. But I think this event is going to be a nice opportunity to do something a little different, um, but still be able to have some fun and, and be very similar to gala. Um, and, and, you know, I've, I've talked to a couple of people uh, actually here on staff and they're like, well, I don't normally come to the gala, so I don't want to get dressed up, but this sounds like something I don't have to get dressed up for. And I'm always <laughs> there for music and dancing, so I'm coming. So we've got some good excitement around it. So it's really great. That's awesome. And you had, yeah. uh, I mean, for, if I'm remembering right, some of those, some of the, you had all those tickets already sold for the gala that was canceled two yeah. days before. And so, and a lot of those people said, ah, keep the money and just apply my ticket to the next gala. And, yeah. and so, so part of, part of this is to kind of, so just, I mean, you're, you're kind of trying to satisfy, satisfy that and give those folks yeah. that literally yeah. already paid an event to come to. And so that's, that's, that's very cool. I've had to yeah, wait like to make two sure. years for this. You had to wait yeah. what? Two years to be able to to try my uh, science experiment with the vest in the uh, ladder. Yeah. So tell tell what you mean by that. Oh, well, it's just a running joke with me and Flinny. I said I we uh, we used to talk on the ball game show about how you could sneak into just about any event that you wanted if you put on an orange vest and a, and carried a ladder. And I'm gonna try it one of these years at the auction and see if I can get in. <laughs> So somebody asked, wh "Where's the event going to be at?" It's it's at the drive-in in uh, in La Grande is the actual place of yeah. the event, and uh, and then this is where you can buy tickets for the event. So yeah, yeah. And if but, anybody's watching, you know, I've talked to everybody who purchased tickets for last year's event, but if either they don't recall my discussion with them, or maybe they didn't get the email, um, if you purchase tickets for last year's event, uh, which got canceled. Uh, or delayed at the time, uh, contact me and I will tell them how to reimburse for their tickets. Um, but yeah, if, if you haven't purchased tickets before or anything else like that, yeah, please go out, buy a ticket. It's going to be a lot of fun. You can buy a whole table for you and your friends if you want to. Um, it's it's going to be a blast. And, and we love to have people come out and show the support for, for the hospital and for the foundation. Wait, was that last year's event that got, or two years, or the last year, two years ago? No, it was last Did year. Did two years ago get uh, canceled too? Nope. No. No, that's your oh, okay. 2019 I'll, I'll went off. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think it'd be funny for like five of us to show up, invest in ladders. You know. Parent, so you're you're telling me I need to invest in some security guys. Yeah. And I need well, to show, no, I I need I to show the pictures of work very well. I, I just think five it would, would be funny. It too obvious. <laughs> I think it would just nullify. Yeah, you can have it, you can see Kyle in the front of the line with the vest and a ladder, and yeah. then five people behind him. Yeah, you know. One of them I could just put on a security shirt thumb though. I could just put on a security shirt and show up. That's an even better yeah. idea. For what bigger a, guys yeah. like us, Kyle, we look like security guys. So yeah, just put some on there with security on the back. If I, yeah, yeah, I can okay. get some of them uh, those plastic handcuffs and a little baton and <laughs> yeah. I'm ready to go. Yeah, the thing about it is there'd be one guy in line with camo and a stool. I mean, that would be, you know, it's like, well, doesn't this work? He's got he's got an orange vest and a ladder. I got camo and a stool. Yeah, anyhow. <laughs> I didn't get that. I didn't get, I didn't catch that one. Okay, some, some variation. All right. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So well, the, when's the auction close? The online auction. The online auction will close that night. It will open up a week before. Um, 
So I'll open it up on Friday the 18th. Um, people can bid and go back and forth and stuff like that. And then we'll close it on the evening of the 25th and everybody will be notified. Um, those who are there, if anybody who is there wins it, they'll take their stuff away that night. And then um, anybody else who maybe didn't attend the event or anything else like that, we can uh, hook up with them and uh, work on picking up stuff. Uh, it sounds super cool. Is there yeah. a, is there a committee that uh, decides who's going to cater these events? Like, do you guys like go around and try food? And does all sit on that committee? Um, we don't try the food per se, but yeah, we do decide on our on our catering. Um, and you know, we like going with Merlin because he he's um, you know adds that extra level uh, of food uh, you know, to that, and he's really dynamic with you know, helping us out with themes and things like that. Um, you know, but we looked, we looked at a lot of different caterers. Um, and, and honestly, there's actually been some caterers that have closed recently because of the pandemic and there not being any events for the last year plus. Um, so unfortunately, you know, that's, it's an unfortunate thing in the industry, but, um, you know, on the, on the other flip side, that though, it's good to get to know some of the local businesses um, who do services like that. So that way it's like, okay, they would work good for this event or that event or, you know, this occasion, things like that. Um, we always like to spread as much, uh, you know, love and business around to other uh, businesses as much as possible. So, yeah, we definitely do that. But unfortunately, we don't get to try the food ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you could if you if you put that stipulation in their application. If we asked like, them hey, to, yeah, we probably could. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, 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 we need to make some changes to that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Kyle Dodd says here's what we need yeah, to do. Bring, yeah, bring in like three or four from Portland. Give them, you know, like just bring some food and we'll try it out. Bring your samples. <laughs> yeah, right, that's right. what you do when you go for like a wedding cake. You they they give you yeah. all these little tasters. You know, like well, I mean, I would imagine that. Caterers are used to that, you know, putting their food out there for people to try if, if they're going to possibly cater an event. Well, probably not yeah, in this I, area. No, yeah. not so much in this area. There's not yeah, as much well. uh, tight competition. Yeah. And, and inevitably, no. you've gone to an event where, you know, Island City or Merlin or, you know, some of the other caterers have done. So you kind of have a good idea of what they have um, yeah. and what they offer. But, uh, yeah, so. Well, yeah, Island City does your golf tournament, huh? Uh, they have, yeah. We've also had yeah. uh, Class Act in the past do it as well. That that food at the golf tournament, last was that last year? Yeah, last year. That was yeah. actually really good food. Yeah, it was yeah, really good food. Yeah, they did a really great job, and and um, you know, we'll I think we'll be uh, we'll be using them again this year. Um, you know, we it, the thing we did last year, you know, with COVID and. and all the, uh, you know, no touch, uh, scenarios, you know, it was nice cause they just had it all boxed up in a box and, you know, we had all the pre-orders done. Um, you know, people, as people came off the particular hole they were playing on. We go, okay, there's these four players, here's their orders. Boom. Here you go, guys. Um, you know, go, go sit down and eat and it worked out really well. So we'll probably just, it, did. It, it, it wasn't any, anything uncomfortable. It, it, some people were yeah. worried, like, yeah, this is going to be weird. But in reality, it really wasn't. Like, we sat with our team at the pic picnic bench there and ate out of the box, and mm -hmm. it, it was good food, and there was no problem with it at all. Yeah, it was fantastic. So hopefully the weather will participate a little bit better this year. Um, you don't have uh, smoke and things like that. But, uh, you know, while we're here talking about it, our golf tournament is on September 11th. Um, don't have any sign up or anything like that yet, uh, but uh, keep your eye out on uh, the foundation website uh, or subscribe to our e newsletter. I promise I won't spam you. Um, and you, we send out details uh, about you know signing up and, and all the going on with the foundation. So, uh, we'd love to have people come out, and it's a scramble. Uh, so even if you're not really great at golf and you want need you know somebody to to prop you up on your team, uh, come on out and have some fun. Um, or even all players can just come out and hang out and have some fun. We've got great competitions as well, putting contests and things like that. So it's a lot of fun. Yeah. And they use a handicap too. So re remember that too. Like they do net and gross. So you went, you can, you don't have to be good. I mean, I put together a team of ringers and we didn't even win. <laughs> I did. I mean, I had two guys that have their PGA, uh, 
teaching cards on my team and, and, yep. you know, because of handicaps and everything, it, which makes it fair. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah. it really does. Balances I, I it like really it. Well. Yeah. So talk about the band for a minute that's coming uh, at the drive-in event. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, the band is called Ripple Effect. Um, they're out of Boise, actually. Uh, they're, the, the name and its current lineup is actually relatively new. They existed before as a different band name. And I, for the life of me, can't remember it off the top of my head. Um, but their lead singer actually works here locally. Um, and he came recommended by one of our board members. Um, and I checked out their videos on Facebook and, uh, they they just are a lot of fun. I can, I, you know, I'm a party band, but I don't, I don't mean that with any negative connotation, um, just cause they're a, a lot of fun. They played great hits and great music from, uh, you know, way back when, you know, for, for, uh, uh, us, uh, you know, Gen Xers like Kyle and I, uh, you know, play hits from the eighties and nineties, but also stuff even before then. Yeah, there they are. Um, I know their lead singer. Yeah, a lot of fun. Um, so, I, you know, I think it's going to be great. They're going to, they're going to, they're really excited about coming up. And, um, I, you know, I've had for years uh, attendees and board members asking me to have music and dancing, and I never really could figure out how to plug it into the gala. So here's here's the opportunity. And, you know, if it goes well, maybe we'll do something like it again later. But, uh, um, yeah, it just seemed, it seemed like a good natural fit for the scenario. Their lead uh, singer is Jared South. Yeah. I know him. Yep. He's a local guy. He lives here in town. Cool. Yep. Well, awesome. Well, Patrick, thanks for jumping on. And again, give us the details one more time. So June 25th, uh, June 25th uh, at the Legrand Drive-In, we'll have uh, a basically a summer party. We're calling it Eastern Oregon Hot Summer Night. Uh, come on out and enjoy some music and some fantastic food. Uh, as well as a online auction and then a drive-in favorite movie at the end of the night. Uh, as you can see there, we encourage uh, creative dress, uh, either in costume or uh, kind of a look, uh, whether it be a poodle skirt or leather jacket or maybe even a John Hughes inspired look. Um, we won't have a costume contest per se, but we always encourage creative dress at all of our events uh, just to have some fun with it. Uh, come on out, support the hospital and the hospital foundation. Uh, we'd love to have you. Uh, and it's a great opportunity to go outside and, and, you know, enjoy some, some good company. Well, and I can't imagine the, I mean, that people already are like cagey. They're ready to do something. Yeah. Ready to get out. Yep. Yeah. (laughs) Everybody I've talked about it. They're like, I am there. Yeah. (laughs) Let me get my tickets now. (laughs) Well, and the, and you could wear your jeans and cowboy boots if you wanted. So, absolutely. Yep. Yep. Yeah. My mom says hi, Flinny. <laughs> right there. Hi, hi Mama Dodzy. <laughs> <laughs> she's uh she's recovering from surgery and she's she she's doing well though. She's doing really well. Awesome. Good deal. Mm. Heal up, Mama Dodzy. Yep. <laughs> All righty. Well, hey, thanks, Pat. We'll talk to you soon. We appreciate awesome. you. Thanks, guys. Yep. Uh-huh. Appreciate you guys. Talk to you later. Uh-huh. All right. Ready for my list? I am. Get us out of here. In 1861, on this day, the first American Civil War land battle took place. Union forces defeated the Confederacy at Philippi in modern day West Virginia. On this day in 1925, the Goodyear airship Pilgrim made its first flight with an enclosed cabin. On this day in 1946, the first bikini bathing suit was displayed in Paris, France. On this day in 1970, the first artificial jean was synthesized. Not like jean pants, like jeans, you know, like in your body. You yeah. know, like what, what you get from your parents. 2001 on this day, the drama Six Feet Under. And I, I put this on because we had uh, um, Loveland on the other day. This is this show's about uh, a mortuary, about... A funeral home six feet under was created by alan bell it had peter Krauss, michael c hall who's dexter and francis conroy it's a great show it, it it premiered on hbo on this day this day 2017 the dr seuss museum opened in springfield massachusetts the song in 1991 that was number one on this day is more than words by extreme everybody knows that song and then my quote for the day is uh by henry ford 
And it's whether you think or whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right. One more time. <laughs> whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right. Hmm. Yep. That's it right. on a Thursday. Beautiful day. Yep. Have a wonderful weekend, Eastern Oregon. We appreciate you. There's today up to 90. Yep. Tomorrow up to 84. So, all righty. It's going to be a nice weekend, I think. Yep. Thanks, you guys. Talk soon. See you Tuesday. Oh, oh, oh wait, wait, wait. One thing. Two things. One is uh, we're going to have um, Cliff Bentz is going to be live on a show uh, on Monday. So that's that's coming up. He'll be right here with me, I think, at 930 on Monday. If for those people that want to ask questions and interact with him like and it seems like there was one other thing that that we needed to mention. Oh, keeping it clear with Cody Bowen next week. We're like a week late, but it was a busy, busy month with. Yeah. Cody coaching the softball team. I mean, he basically coached the high school softball team by himself. And yeah. so he had a really busy month. So I didn't even bother with it this month, but we're going to do it early in June for, for, for May. So, okay. And then uh, the grand high school graduation this Saturday will be right here on EO live also. So yep. have a great weekend, Eastern Oregon. We appreciate you. All right. Thank you.